I think as parents, universally, we all want the same thing. We want our kids to be happy, we want them to be confident and self-assured, and we want to set them up to be successful in life. And simplifying our lives and our homes and our stuff and our schedules is so important and integral to that. I think where we might differ a little bit is for us individually, what does success look like and how would we define it? For some of us, like for me, I want our kids to be responsible. I want them to be empathetic. I want them to have a heart for other people and caring for and helping other people. For others, we might want them to excel at athletics or sports or some kind of arts, something academically based where they really need to apply themselves and to do well in school. And for us, that's what success would look like for them as adults. But here's what's so great. It does not matter how we define success, these principles that we're gonna talk about today will work for all of those and are actually very important for all of those. No matter how we define success, our kids all need these things. They need downtime, they need pressure releases throughout the day, they need rhythms to their day, they need less stuff to manage and less decisions to make. They need time for play. If we want their little brains to fully develop to their fullest potential, again, no matter what that looks like for us and how we define that, it is universal though, they need time to play so let's talk about how we can simplify a few areas of our homes and our lives to really set our kids up for success. All right, so let's just go through a few areas, again, through this lens of setting up our kids for success as adults. So what I'm gonna draw on for this is my experience growing up, my experience with our kids, again, we have four kids. Now they're currently ages six through 11. Uh, the book Simplicity Parenting has been huge and also other research that I've done. So I will try and link to any of that down below that I reference throughout this video. So let's get started talking about kids toys and time for play. So there's a very interesting study that was done and what it says, I don't like using scare tactics, but what it says is that when kids have too many toys, it can actually lend itself to addictive behavior. Because if we look at what addictive behavior is at, at the core, I mean, if we're oversimplifying it, it's a way to escape our current reality or a way to deal with feelings and emotions. And so what they found is that when kids have a lot of toys, that they can sometimes have a difficult time figuring out how to manage their emotions or deal with it. And so instead of working through these emotions, they can tend to go from toy to toy, looking for some kind of distraction or something else to do. Now, this is a big claim, right? I don't wanna say just because our kids have tons of toys, they're gonna to be addicts when they're adults. Please hear me for what I'm saying here. But again, looking through this lens of, we wanna set our kids up for success as adults, there is so much research that says that Kids do well in a highly simplified environment with very few toys, and this is what leads to creative, imaginative play. And I've definitely experienced that this with our kids, that as we've highly simplified their toys, they play better together, they play longer, they are much more creative, and there's also research that shows they have better social skills and higher self-esteem. And so there are so many benefits that have been well-researched that show kids do very well with highly simplified toys. What's the problem? We are up against a trillion dollar toy industry that spends billions of dollars on marketing every single day to tell us otherwise that in order for our kids to be happy and engaged and have a very full and vibrant childhood, that there are lots of toys that they need to facilitate that. So we know that's not true. I have a whole series of videos on <laughs> simplifying kids' toys. The good news is, is that it can be done very simply and quickly. And I recommend just boxing them up and saying, we're just gonna do an experiment and see if we miss these toys telling them that we will pull out any toys that you ask for that you want back, but really simplifying down to those open-ended toys, like things like Legos and blocks and play food and dolls, uh, very simple things 
I feel like you're gonna find that your kids are gonna play so much better. And so this is an area where I don't necessarily even want you to take my word for it. I really would love for you also to learn about this and research it because I feel like you're gonna have stronger convictions about it like me. <laughs> and so I want you to also research it and learn about this on your own because I do think it'll have more lasting effects. But here's the main thing to remember, that kids don't need toys to stay entertained. All they need is their imagination. Their imagination is what helps to occupy them and keep them entertained and keep them engaged in what it is that they're doing. It's not the toys. And this ties into craft supplies as well. I don't facilitate like craft projects, STEM activities, sensory play. What is so cool is that we can take all these subcategories of parenting, like STEM activities, sensory play, uh, doing craft projects with your kids. If you enjoy doing that, of course, do that. But don't feel guilty or pressured like you have to because if your kids are playing outside, guess what? If they're playing in grass or they're playing in water, those are sensory activities. If they're building with Legos or blocks, those are STEM activities. And so I know they're all packaged now and we can buy them and there's Pinterest activities for them and we can create them. But really, if your kids are just playing, they are getting all of those activities in. And then as far as craft supplies, we actually have a really simplified how much we keep because again, I don't wanna manage a lot of inventory around craft supplies, so we keep it highly simplified, but I feel like they're the most imaginative when they have very little to work with. So I hope this is good news because again, as we just simplify things, it makes our parenting easier and our kids are happier. Another area is simplifying kids' clothes. And so I had pared down all our kids' clothes to about five outfits each. As they've gotten older and they wanna have more input in what they wear, they have a little bit more, but as they get older, they can manage more too. And I just, I just simplified this because I wanted to simplify laundry and keep our house more clean, which definitely happened. But also, we don't want our kids to have decision fatigue. In the book it says, by simplifying clothes, you ease transitions. You offer freedom from choice and overload while still allowing for the slow and sure development of personal expression. I love that. You offer freedom from choice and overload. And it's funny because that's what I wanted as an adult when I set my uniform or whatever, but we can also give that same gift to our kids. Another question that will come up is sentimental items. And so we're a big fan of, of having a memory box or a baby box for each of our kids where they can put in special items, but it's limited to that container. And so it's using the container concept or making the boundaries the bad guy where we say, you are welcome to keep anything that's special to you, but it just needs to fit in here. And so it's a great skill for them to learn now that they'll be able to carry on well into their adult lives, that we can't keep any, everything, but we can really keep the truly special stuff. And here is a place of honor that we're gonna keep it so it's safe and we'll always know where to find it. So from there, let's talk a little bit about simplifying our kids' activities. One of the things that I thought was so interesting in Simplicity Parenting was that the author found through their experiences that kids were actually starting to show similar symptoms to post-traumatic stress disorder from being exposed to chronic stress and being introduced to adult topics too early in life. And so what the author talks a lot about is that our kids are overscheduled, their day is too full, leaving not enough time to relieve stress or to have these pressure releases that he talks about where they can reset. And so he talks quite a bit how important rhythms are to our day, to our kids getting enough sleep. We know this, right? But when he talked about how this is all culminating into these stress-like symptoms that are very similar to PTSD, I was like, oh my goodness, we need to pay a little more attention to this as parents. And I know, like we said at the beginning, if, if how we're defining success for our kids is anywhere like academic based or with their performance in sports or arts, we feel very pressured as parents to make sure they're in the right activities and they're getting enough training and exposure to that. But what we need to balance that with is making sure that they have enough time to play, to just be kids, and how important that time in their day that we set aside for just play, for just relaxing, how important that is to their mental health and also to their brain development. And realizing as parents that time in front of the TV is is not the same, that they need time that is 
play that is just good old-fashioned play where they're not in front of a screen it's not a structured activity it's not homework it's literally time where they use their imagination they get to relax and unwind where nothing is being asked of them and so this is so important and I just think it's it's one of these things as parents that we just don't always know about because we're trying to do the right thing for our kids right by putting them in activities and doing these things and I think what's been surprising to me is that I I really thought when we left high school, maybe even college, that we were leaving peer pressure behind, right? That we could now be adults and go about our life as we see fit. And I have been so amazed when we started having kids, how much peer pressure there was around me both from other parents that wanted me to put my kids in the same activities that they were putting their kids in, but also from very well-meaning relatives and friends who say, oh, you're not doing this. Oh, what do you mean your kids aren't in dance? They're not in Girl Scouts. They're not doing this activity or that. And if we weren't putting our kids in all of the activities and the things, it felt like we were being bad parents, right? We didn't care about our kids. We didn't care about their future, that their, their social lives. And I realized now that that couldn't be further from the truth because as I've researched more and learned more about this, I wholeheartedly believe that our kids need downtime in order to be happy and to not be introduced a, a big thing they talk about in the book is to not be introduced to an adult paced schedule too early on in life and so not over scheduling them and having too many activities and too many things for them to think about and worry about but I do think it's important as parents that we stop every once in a while and we look around and we say, okay, what do my kids need right now in this age and stage and season? Again, keeping in mind what our definition of success is for them, what we're hoping for them in the future, who we're hoping to raise them to be, and what do we need right now? Do they need more downtime? Do they need a sim more simple environment to really be able to thrive in? Less decisions. Have we been accidentally uh, introducing them to a more adult paced life or adult based topics that they overhear us talking about or they hear through different media channels. Do we need to back off on the screen time? Has that been causing them to be a little bit crabbier and not as enjoyable to be around? What do my kids need right now? And I do know this, that as we have simplified our home, it led to simplifying our schedule and it gave me the capacity to really be able to stop and look around and say, what do my kids need? What do they need from our home? And what do they need from me? And I love, I one of the books I read on attachment, I mean, it talked about how we help our kids regulate their emotions, especially when they're little. In many studies, they found that a parent, if they just put their hand on their child's back, would help them regulate their emotions without even saying anything. But unfortunately, as we continue to be more distracted as parents, and as our kids are consuming more content through screens on TV and online, that there's, there's a breakdown between this ability for us to help regulate our kids' emotions. So again, as we try to just go back to simplifying things, the most simple ways to entertain our kids and to simplify their childhood, I feel like the benefits that you are going to see are gonna be so worthwhile. And will it potentially be difficult in the very beginning? It could be, right, as we try to change these things. But is it a incredibly worthwhile pursuit? I think it is. I think it is one of the most worthwhile things that we can do. And like I said, I don't necessarily just want you to take my word for it. I would love for you to read this book, Simplicity Parenting, look at some of the articles I'm going to link to, and really look for ways that we can begin to simplify our kids' childhood again and also find meaningful ways to connect with them. And so I do wanna talk a little bit more about screen time specifically. So I'm gonna do a separate video. It's gonna be on our blog and on, and on Facebook. So I'm gonna to link to that down below, but I do have a few ideas of how we've simplified screen time and I feel like it's made a huge difference in our house. So I'm gonna do a separate video on that and I will leave that link down below. But I would really like to know, are there areas that you have simplified with your kids that have really paid off? Are there ways you've cut back on activities or other things? And have there been good benefits? Because when you share about that too, it's very helpful. And so how do you find that balance? How do you know the right number of activities to do with your kids? Or if you have other questions related to kids and stuff and, and parenting, I would love to see those as well. So thank you for watching. If you haven't done so already, I hope you subscribe so we can spend more time together. But I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again soon.